Now, the organs of the body are all located within their cavities. And the body cavities are really important because they protect, compartmentalize, surround the organs of the body. So the organs of the body can be in a nice, logical place, in the right situation, in the right position, so they can perform their appropriate physiological functions. And if we start at the top, we see that the top cavity here is the cranial cavity. So this is the cranial cavity at the top. And the cranial cavity is going to contain the brain, and it's also going to contain the meningeal layers that surround the brain. And it's surrounded by the cranial bones. So the cranial bones surround, define, compartmentalize the cranial cavity. Now you probably know that the spinal cord is continuous with the brain. So the cavity is also continuous. So what we notice is that there's a spinal or vertebral cavity that's projecting down, so the spinal cord can go down this cavity. And this cavity is sur surrounded by the, the vertebrae, the vertebrae, these uh, backbones. And the spinal cord, which is in the vertebral cavity, can go through these bones, and that means it's protected. And this is why it's so important if we have any injuries to the vertebrae. Because if there's any injuries to the vertebrae, then what can happen is... Imagine that's the, imagine that's the spinal cord. This piece of paper is the spinal cord. And that's going through the vertebrae, like that. Now, that's all absolutely fine, as long as the vertebrae are intact. But if the vertebrae is damaged, and then we move the patient's neck, or we move the patient's back in the wrong way, then it can transect the spinal cord, which is now useless. Now, this turns an injury from the vertebrae this is a serious injury, into a catastrophic injury. This is terribly serious. I was joking a bit then, but it's really serious. We must be so careful with this because that means that whatever level the spinal cord is transected at, the patient will not feel or move anything below that level ever again. So we can see already that there's important clinical implications here. And the spinal cord actually stops about there. Uh, stops about there. But the... Uh, the spinal cavity or the vertebral cavity goes on further down because we have large nerves going down there as well to supply the pelvic organs and the, and the bottom part of the body. So we have this um, cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity. Now these are sometimes described as the, uh, the dorsal body cavities. Now when we're talking about the body, this is the dorsal surface here at the back and this is the ventral surface here. Or another way to put it is this is the posterior and this is the anterior. But these are sometimes described as dorsal body cavities. And these are the, <coughs> these are the neurological cavities. Neurological. Because the brain and the spinal cord, of course, are the, the neurological tissues. So they're the dorsal body cavities. Now, going down, of course, we have the, uh, the thoracic cavity, which is here, which we've drawn in blue. Now, the thoracic cavity is going to contain the lungs, it's going to contain the heart, the major blood vessels that are associated with the heart. So you might know that leaving the heart, we have the aorta and the pulmonary arteries. Well, one pulmonary artery leaves the heart. It quickly divides into two, one going to each lung. We've also got the inferior and superior vena cava, taking blood back to the right side of the heart, and the, and the um, pulmonary veins, taking blood back to the left side of the heart. So we've got the heart and the lungs there, uh, the major vessels, and also the esophagus, the food pipe, because you swallow food up there, but it's actually used down there in your stomach. So it has to go through the thoracic cavity. So the esophagus, and also the trachea is in the thoracic cavity, which is taking air to the, uh, the right and left main bronchus to go into the right and left lung. And there's also a rather interesting gland in the thoracic cavity called the thymus gland, which has a fascinating immunological functions. So they're within the thoracic cavity, which we've drawn here in blue. So that's the thorax or the thoracic cavity. It comes from the Greek word for, for chest. Now going lower down, we have the uh, abdomino-pelvic cavity. 
the abdominopelvic cavity. Now I'm just going to trace the outline of this now. So it goes here. This is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is dividing the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. So it's the diaphragm. Then that's the anterior surface of the abdominopelvic cavity going down here. All the way down here. And back up to back, back up there. So that's the abdominopelvic cavity. It's covering the abdomen and the pelvis, the abdominopelvic cavity. And the reason we call it one cavity, really, anatomically, is it is one cavity. So, for example, if you were pregnant, then the, the uterus will expand up into the abdominal cavity, as you will clearly remember if you have uh, been in a state of gestation. Uh, that the baby will rise up, that the fetus will rise up here as the uterus rises up. Or even indeed if you've got a very full bladder that can also rise up into the into the abdominal cavity as well. Um, but medically it's very often useful to think about the abdominal cavity as being separate. So the abdominal cavity is actually this part here. The top part of the abdominal cavity is the inferior surface of the diaphragm and that's it there we've drawn in orange. And then the pelvic cavity is the bit below that. <coughs> so this is the pelvic cavity here <coughs> in yellow. Now, the, the abdominal cavity is going to contain the stomach, the, uh, the liver, the spleen, the, the, the gallbladder, the small intestine, most of the colon and the large intestine as well. And further down, the pelvis is going to contain the... Um, it's going to contain the bladder, as we've said, um, part of the large intestine, the anus, um, but also um, mostly the, the, the reproductive organs um, are, are going to be in the, in the pelvis. And the pelvis actually is the area of anatomy in which is surrounded by the pelvic bone. So you have the pelvic girdle here that surrounds the, uh, surrounds the, the pelvic cavity. So the pelvic cavity actually goes from about uh, L4, the fourth lumbar vertebrae there, to, to the anterior rim. Um, so so the, the volume of the pelvis really is described by the bone round about it rather than an individual cavity because it's continuous with the, the abdominal cavity. So we see that the cavities aren't cavities at all in life. They're actually filled, <laughs> filled with the organs. So um, if you uh, saw the top off my skull pull out my brain, pull out the vessels in my brain and the meninges, what you'll be left with is, is the, the cavity, the, the hole where those things were. So the cavities are the holes where the organs uh, are actually located. Now, uh, let's look at this from the front now, from uh, an anterior view. And I've started to hatch this one in already. Um, Actually, I think just before we do that, we'll mention the, uh, we mentioned that these were the, um, at the back we had the, uh, the, the, the dorsal cavities, uh, which were the cranial cavity and the spinal cavity. All these at the front are sometimes also referred to as the, uh, the, the ventral body cavities or, or the anterior body cavities uh, at the front. So the ventral cavities are going to be the thoracic cavity and the abdominopelvic cavity are the ventral or the anterior cavities now as we were looking at the uh, looking at this from the, the front the anterior view so here we can see the, uh, the cranial cavity as we know that contains the brain and there we see the top of the vertebral or spinal cavity now what we have around here is the thoracic cavity which is going round about here like this and this is the diaphragm and the thoracic cavity is protected by the ribs and the intercostal muscles to protect these delicate organs and it's compartmentalized from the abdominal cavity by the diaphragm which runs across there this dome shaped muscle that compartmentalizes the thoracic cavity above uh, the superior ventral cavity and the inferior ventral cavity which is the abdomino uh, and, uh, and pelvic pelvic cavities but we notice i've drawn two colors here so we have the in blue we have these are the lung fields the, these are the uh the pleural cavities 
the pleural cavities. And these are surrounded by the pleural membranes. And we notice that each lung really is in its own little cavity. Uh, well, not that little, <laughs> the lungs are quite big. So we have the right pleural cavity and the left pleural cavity there. And this is so important that the lungs are in their own cavity because if someone comes along with a, with a knife and they uh, stab you in the chest with it, then what's going to happen is air from the outside world is going to get into this cavity and that lung's going to collapse. And that's really serious. But if both lungs collapsed, that would be even more serious. So only one lung will collapse with a penetrating chest injury because the other lung is in its own individual pleural cavity. That's just very, very important. But what I've coloured in in red here, in red we have this area here. This is the mediastinum. Now, the mediastinum is the bit in the middle. M media is in the middle, so it's in the middle of the chest. So it's going down the middle of the chest there, and it goes from the sternum all the way to the vertebrae at the back. And it's in two parts. The, uh, the top part, what we're going to call the top part, well, the top part's always called superior, isn't it? So that's the superior mediastinum we've drawn here. And this is going to be the inferior mediastinum here. Now, the inferior mediastinum, in a sense, has got its own cavity. This is, the, uh, this is the pericardial cavity. Peri, around about, cardiac, heart. So the pericardial cavity is surrounding the heart, and that's in a tough pericardial membrane, and the heart is inside here. And the superior part of the mediastinum... Um, now, the superior starts where, the, if you feel your chest there, the, the, there's, a, there's a sternal notch in the sternum that is the sternal notch and if, if you go back from there you come to the junction between the uh, fourth and the fifth thoracic vertebrae uh, anything above that is the superior mediastinum anything below that is the inferior mediastinum now the superior mediastinum contains largely the large blood vessels like the the aorta and the superior vena cava this is why injuries to the centre of the chest are so significant. So if someone has injuries to the centre of the chest, that can damage the large blood vessels or the heart. As we see, <coughs> the heart does go slightly towards the left. So lateral chest injuries are sometimes well, still serious, of course, but they can be less serious where the central chest injuries can be immediately life threatening because of the heart and the major blood vessels and penetrating injuries there can result in exsanguinating hemorrhage and um, uh, clearly a fatal, potentially fatal condition in, in, in pretty short order. Now going down to the um, abdominal cavity. So at the, the top right of the abdominal cavity in this area here, here we have the liver. So the liver is top right, and the liver is just underneath your, your right costal margin, which is just there. So that's your liver there. And underneath the left costal margin just there, on this side, we have the spleen. So it's liver and spleen. Kidneys, of course, at the back. And the colon goes from here, up here in the, uh, the um, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, then it goes back through the sigmoid colon to the to the rectum. So this is the abdominal cavity here. And then further down here, as we see, we have the pelvic cavity. Now in, in uh, females, of course, this contains the ovaries and the, uh, the fallopian tubes, what we now call the uterine tubes. It's going to contain the uterus and the, uh, the vagina, uh, the bladder as well, of course. Uh, in men, the sperm comes from the testes, but it comes up into the pelvic cavity uh, to mix with the secretions from the, uh, the prostate gland. So we have the pelvic cavity there, as we said, defined by the bones of the, of the pelvic rim. So they're the main body cavities, the uh, cranial vertebral, uh, the back, the dorsal body cavities, the thorax, Thorax being divided into the uh, pulmonary pericardial cavity, although the pericardial cavity is part of the uh, mediastinum. The abdominal cavity with these major organs and digestive organs in, and the pelvic cavity with the bladder and 
reproductive organs in. Very important for protection. So obviously we have the bones of the skull and the vertebrae protecting the neurological structures, but then we've got the ribs and the intercostal muscles. And actually, <coughs> the ribs and the intercostal muscles actually protect the top part of the liver and, and the kidneys to some extent as well. Uh, also the, the spleen here. We have the vertebrae at the back and we have firm muscles over the top of the uh, abdominal cavity as well, protecting the, the organs of the abdominal cavity. So they're the main structures. That's the first part of this video. Now, in the next part, what I want to do is look at the membranes which are associated with the organs in these cavities. So just to whet your appetite, we're going to have the meninges surrounding the brain and the spinal cord, very important for meningitis. We're going to have the pleural membrane surrounding the lungs. We've already noted the pericardial membrane surrounding the heart. And in the abdominal cavity, we're going to, and, and indeed in the pelvic cavity to, uh, to some extent, we're going to have the uh, peritoneal membranes, which of course become inflamed in peritonitis, for example. So. Tune in for the next video for that interesting next episode.